An African proverb offers this advice. Search in your past for what is good and beautiful. Build your future from there. The Maeslick Negro School that opened its doors in September of 1921 was one of those good and beautiful things for the African-American children of Mason County. It's a big part of the shared history of the community. And some 60 years after it closed, it's still a source of pride. Efforts to restore the building have been challenging, but the commitment to save it is just as strong as the memories of its former students. For 40 years in racially segregated America, African-American children in Mason County attended grades one through eight at the Rosenwald Mayslick Negro School. It was never impressed upon me that I was going to a segregated school. I was just, it was just my, I'm just coming to school. This is our school. I rode the school bus with the white kids to Lewisburg, and then I had to switch buses in Lewisburg and, and come all the way over here. We were right at school, but we couldn't go to that school. We had to come all the way over here. Integration was completed in the county, and by 1960, the Mazelik School closed with the building used for other purposes. Decades later, when the school building was given back to the care of the community, fundraising and restoration efforts began. In 2019, some former students and one beloved teacher gathered in the school building to talk about their school days. So we got our education and we had fun doing it. Well, first thing you did when you got off the school bus, we played outside. Playing basketball, playing tag. Somebody would uh, stand out on the front steps and ring the school bell for us to begin class. Miss Foley's first and second, third grade teacher, she would play the piano and we'd stand out there and we'd march in up those steps there. We sang uh, a spiritual song. We had a prayer. We said the golden rule, the pledge of allegiance to the flag before we began our class. At lunchtime, we would trade, trade sandwiches. Some would have bologna sandwich, some would have even jelly and, and, and uh, biscuits. Whatever we had for Sunday dinner, that's what we bought on Monday for lunch. We either brought it or else Miss Foley would make our list of what we want. And we would go up here to the store. She'd send two people in a basket. We take our paper, fold it, kind of like a little sailing ship, and then uh, that's that was our water cup. I can remember uh, coming to a fall festival where you dunk for apples in a in a tub that had apples in it. I remember the first year that I was here, uh, we got our school pictures taken, and my oldest brother was to make sure that my hair looked right on my picture. There were treasured memories here teachers that were here and they had loving hearts and kindness toward the students, we were all treated with respect. I think the teachers expected us to do well and they knew we could do well. They were um, role models and say surrogate parents. They wanted the best for us. They wanted to see black children progress. They wanted us to get what we needed to make it in this world. They know what we were going to face when we got out into life, that we had to be a, a, really a step ahead to, to succeed and, and, and have a good life and things. So they, they were pretty strict on us. And if you did too much talking in class, sometimes there was one teacher that, you know, she'd tap you on your hand with the ruler. <laughs> My favorite teacher was Mrs. French. I had gone to school here myself. You know, she instilled that will to do better and to learn, and I just loved her. We knew there were things we did not have. You know, we knew um, the school, the white school, had uh, central heat, running water, inside bathrooms. Just the way it was. Never saw a new book. Didn't know what it was. All of the books were worn, tattered, pages torn. We knew that they came from the white schools that they were books that they were casting off. And we had to make covers out of our brown picker sacks to cover the backs of those books. It didn't affect how we learned, because uh, we had good teachers. They did do an excellent job of educating us. We, when we integrated, we were on par with everyone else because of what our teachers did. As you look back upon it, you realize that it was how valuable it was to you. 
They gave you that start, gave you that foundation. As a Rosenwald school, the school in Mayslick was a part of one of the most significant initiatives in the history of American public education. In the first decades of the 20th century, a partnership between Booker T. Washington of Tuskegee Institute and Julius Rosenwald, part owner and president of Sears and Roebuck, helped communities fund and build more than 4,000 schools for African-American children in southern states. There were 158 Rosenwald schools in 64 Kentucky counties. Not many remain standing today. Being a Rosenwald school helped us tremendously in getting this on a national register. No one really realized the significance of this being a Rosenwald school or what it meant to be a Rosenwald school until after it closed. The typical agreement in a Rosenwald school in the community is that Rosenwald would contribute so much and the community had to contribute so much as well as the, the Negro population. And when you compare it to the other Rosenwald schools that were built, hardly anybody put as much money into their schools as our African-American community did into this school. And these were people that were poor and, and so what they gave meant a lot. And the community just, they came together and put this together for us. And for us to lose it would be a shame. This is something that really needs to be saved. It's part of the community. It's something that uh, everybody should cherish. An efforts underway to preserve and restore our school. The people who started the project, they did a lot of work. They could, kudos to them, they did a fantastic job. We've had some contact with the Rosenwald people. Uh, they would really like to see this restored. This is a unique situation, this building, the fact that the community was able to do this. I think this is a worthy project. It should be continued. The story of the African American education in Mason County needs to be told. This place will play a, a central part in telling that story. It's just that, well, we, got, we still have to carry on. We still need more help. <laughs> I want to see this become a reality um, because it's meant so much. And it means so much to so many people. Where would I be uh, had I not got this boost in life from this school? It would be nice to see it be restored, you know, because this is our school, our alma mater. <laughs> whatever it takes and whatever we need to do, that's what we need to do. I am confident this is going to happen.